Hello crafty cuties, welcome back to part two of this door journal. Um, first of all, let me just say guys, this did not go as planned at all. I do like the finished product, but it, I, you know what? I was not going to put the video up, but I decided to because I thought, I know a lot of other people struggle and when they see craft videos online, they think like, oh, these people get it right all the time in their first try. Nope, not true. First of all, to start off, I lost the footage of me putting the rest of this cardboard base together. So you're going to see that the panels on the door are already glued down. Okay. So I thought at first I was not going to film it at all because I was like, oh no, I just, I, I messed up this video, but I went ahead and just started and I thought that you could probably learn something from this still. So you see now we have the cardboard base. I have a piece of muslin that's just a little bit bigger than the door and I have my favorite glue which is the Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. It's the only glue I would trust for this project so um, I don't know how other glues would work out. They might be just fine and Honestly, I would probably do quite a few things different the next time that I make one of these, um, but using a different glue is not one of those things. So I'm starting out by covering this entire thing in a lot of glue. I wanted to cover it in fabric and then paint it, and that's mostly because I was thinking it was going to be the right texture that I wanted and the right durability. If I could do this all over, I don't think I would have added the fabric. And this is actually the second try that I, I, I read. Yeah. Anyways, this is my second try at this door. So again, since I like the final product, I'm still going to keep at it and show you kind of how I got the final look, <laughs> the final project. Um, and so here we are. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, you see I'm covering this in fabric, but it's not that easy since you have all of these crevices and um, different layers. And so you're going to use like a bone folder or something really sharp. And I've used fabric like this over embossed images and never had a problem. So I'm not really sure why I had a problem here, but essentially it just seemed like this fabric was not as um, flexible or stretchy as what whatever fabric I used in the past. And I've done fabric over embossed images a ton of times. And like I said, I've never had issues, but for some reason it just seemed like this fabric would not end up staying stuck down it was just getting pulled and I, I don't know I hope that you'll be able to see it in the video this is the first time I'm actually watching the clips back but I don't notice I have a problem until we're pretty far in anyways <laughs> so yeah I'm taking my bone folder and I'm just going to continue on with pressing down all around the different heights or I guess image um not wow it's been a long day. I tell you, I think in every video, I'm like, oh, it's been a long day. I don't know how to talk. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, so I'm just pressing the fabric in around each of the layers. And you're going to notice I have one pink fingernail. That is because Arlo wanted to paint my fingernail. And it, I realized it was going to be really messy if I let her paint the rest of my nails. So now we just have one fingernail and it looks really weird. So at first this seemed like it was going pretty well. Like I said, you can see I use so much glue that um, you can see it wet. I was pointing out an area where there is some ink showing and you're also going to see that like there's, um, you can see like a little bit of the cardboard through the fabric. That doesn't matter because we are painting, but you're gonna see there's like these bubbles that happen and again, that's the problem. So I'm not sure. I add a little bit of water because I was thinking that maybe it would just make the fabric a little bit more flexible, I guess. But it was a little too much there. Um, I, I would not add water again. But I'm not really sure why I was getting all of these bubbles. Because in the past when I would do this over an embossed area, um, it would just go down around the image perfectly. But... I'm going to continue on and just keep using my bone folder and I eventually get something out that's, um, it's my all, so it's a little bit pokier. I was thinking that maybe if I 
use something a little bit sharper. It just seemed like it wasn't like grabbing, but I know that the glue works well, so it's not the glue, but I don't know. I would definitely maybe try again with another fabric or something. I just didn't think, because I wanted to do a lot of layers of paint, and so that's why I didn't really want to paint straight onto the cardboard. And then also, I just feel like the texture wasn't going to be right. And I am really happy with the um, the texture but the, in the end, but not throughout. So now I'm going to trim off the corners once I got it glued down as good as I could. And I'm just going to go ahead and wrap that extra fabric around the cardboard. And I did make sure to, when I was pulling the fabric like tightly around the edge, I would kind of have to go back through and press down areas again because it was pulling the fabric like completely up and over so that you would have like this bubble. So I had to kind of go back and forth and that's what this project kind of ended up being. It was a lot of back and forth. So I didn't actually end up filming all of the steps because there were several times when I was just like, I'm giving up and I'm trying to take care of a toddler at the same time. I mean, my husband was home when I was doing it, but she just always still wants mama. And since we're in quarantine, there's not like a lot of us being able to go out of the house and it is such a rainy weekend. So here I go. I pull out my bone full or sorry, my awl. And this was a mistake because it ended up ripping the fabric. However, maybe I shouldn't call things a mistake. It was just, it was not what I should have done. I'm showing that it kind of ripped the fabric here, if you can see. So I was just like, oh no, like this is ruined. But instead I was like, let me just take my scissors and I'll go ahead and cut. And that's going to help since I have bubbles in the fabric, I could, you know, glue it down. And I figured I was painting over it anyways. So that was okay. That ended up okay. But it definitely, I don't know. It was just, this was a challenging project. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. And I'm still happy I did it because I did learn a lot. So um, if I make one of these again, then I'm going to be able to do it even better the next time. <laughs> So I'm going to just go back through now that you can see. So I think this is where I kind of gave up and I didn't film because I was cutting around the raised edges and gluing back down the fabric. Does that make sense? I really don't know if I'm making sense, but I'm hoping that you can kind of see. I also had to go back through and add a lot of extra glue like on top because I wanted to make sure everything was going to basically meld into one. I didn't want there to be an obvious fabric, you know, coming up off of the cardboard at all. So I think you can get a good look here how I cut the fabric and now you can see the cardboard, but I just keep on trucking. That's what you got to do sometimes in these projects. You just got to keep going or you got to make a decision. Do you want to go on? And I mean, you're probably going to like the end result. You just have to be willing to be flexible and to kind of go with the flow. And since I had an exact picture in my head how I wanted this to turn out, I think that's why it was really hard for me to go with the flow. And if you guys know me well, I'm a very go with the flow type of crafter. I don't follow instructions. I don't measure things. I just do it. And I'm usually so happy with that. But I mean, this is just kind of an example why I don't do a lot of custom journals. And don't get me wrong, I 100% wanted to make this custom journal. Um, it's just that custom journals have always been a challenge for me because I have exact ideas for how I want things to turn out. And so since I don't craft that way, it just doesn't really work for me. So I was getting ready to put my baby down for a nap. And so I wanted to do just a really quick wash of some white paint over some of the areas that had the ink showing through because when I came back I wanted that to be dry so that I could start my painting process so this is just essentially giving me a little base to work with and I use my fingers a lot when I'm painting I wanted the end result to be looking more like a um a really weathered down door I guess so I'm just using my fingers getting that paint all across there once that was all dry, I went ahead and mixed up some paints. I used a dark gray and a white just because I didn't have the right gray. And I used this folk art gray color with just a white acrylic. This is acrylic paint. 
So I just mixed that until I was happy with the color. And a little tip here, if you are mixing your own colors, just make sure that you are mixing enough so that you don't have so that you don't run out and you have to try to mix up the same exact color because I I did have to do that towards the end but it turned out okay but it's definitely better if you have you know enough so um no rhyme or reason here I'm just using a paintbrush and I'm just going to start by painting the trim of the door um and then I'm painting the whole door this gray color to start with but I'm just going to do a pretty even thin coat here i'm not worried about color peeking out or anything like that that's just to get this uh, base color down i do go ahead and speed up a lot of these clips just because it's really repetitive and i was going pretty slow so i want to kind of you know focus a little bit more on the important steps so that if you guys are wanting to recreate th this or i don't know if you got inspired to make one then you'll hopefully kind of know what to try and what not to try and so I'm just finishing up this first coat. Now I wasn't too sure on what I wanted to do for a second color. I didn't want this to be a perfectly painted house with like the trim one color and whatnot. I just kind of wanted it to be messy. So for the second color, I'm taking this folk art navy blue and I'm going to start by using my finger because again, I wanted this to just look kind of distressed, I guess, and I'm going to go around all of the raised areas. All right, and while you had no idea I was gone, I'm back here finishing this voiceover like three days later, so I was trying to figure out what I had already said, but here we go. We're just gonna do this thing, all right? So I'm using this darker color around the edges to make it look a bit distressed. Hello. Arlo says hello. I use my fingers in this type of painting or I guess maybe you could call it mixed media um quite a bit I just like using my fingers you know I even do that when I'm spreading glue on things I just like getting my hands messy it's just something I enjoy now the funny thing is you're gonna see I end up painting the trim of this door and I realized I did not like the color so I paint over it a second time but we'll get there don't worry while I'm doing this uh, repetitive motion here I'll tell you I was just scrolling Instagram during my daughter's nap because she sleeps on me so I'm kind of stuck for a few hours um, and holy moly there are just some a lot of inspiration on Instagram and it's almost so much that I was close to making like five different online orders for different paper packs oh are those getting mad um yeah, I was gonna buy some Maggie Holmes paper and and um, Paige Evans, like that kind of style, like I guess more modern, bright, happy paper. You probably know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, I got in a rabbit hole, I suppose you would call it, um, on Instagram, looking at just all of these gorgeous uh, projects, like layered embellishments and fun little I don't know embellishment clusters with beads hanging off and um really cute sequin shakers and then even just some traveler's notebooks with um shakers on the front of them or just using the really bright pretty papers like I was just mentioning and holy moly it really it I have so much paper you guys like I probably have paper that would work for those type of embellishments and you know what that's yeah actually I should challenge myself and just go through and see what I have but I know you guys get me and sometimes when you're getting inspired by things on Instagram or maybe Pinterest or probably even here on YouTube sometimes you just want to go out and buy the exact same things that you see someone using because you're like oh that's gonna make it easier and I want to make it just like they did um, but you know what I, I can't be spending money like that right now on things and plus I just don't need to but let me get back to the project real quick I'm actually painting on some crackle paint and for some reason it didn't work and so I don't know if that's because I'm painting on top of fabric or maybe I didn't let it get dry enough but I end up just painting over it you're gonna see um and yeah I never crackled so I don't know what I did wrong 
But anyways, back to my little inspiration chat. Um, so I don't know. I think during this time when we're all stuck inside and it's hard to go shopping anyways, I mean, really, we're not supposed to be get going out for fun shopping, right? Um, let's just dig into our collections and our stash because I mean, I know not everyone has a huge stash, but I know that a majority of you crafty people watching this video also have a stash of things that you buy and you just don't get to the project so you set it aside and then you buy the new collections and then you know so on and so forth a lot of times when i buy like a 12 by 12 paper pad and there I was just showing you the colors i'm using for the trim that i'm not going to end up liking um a lot of times when i buy a 12 by 12 paper pad even if i make a full journal and i used that collection I usually have at least half of the papers left because I'm not typically using the doubles because there's usually like one or there's usually like two of each design, you know, I'm usually only using one, not always, but mostly, and I'm not usually even using half the paper pad. So, but I don't know, like when I'm done with one project, I usually put that paper pad aside and just stick it into my little, um, craft area so I really need to go back through and like I said there were so many cute projects that I want to make and I took a lot of screenshots thinking I'm gonna ever have time to do them but definitely gonna try my hand at it once I was done painting that trim I went ahead and pulled out my um, heat heating tool to kind of speed up the drying process and I thought maybe that would help the crackle effect but like I said it never really worked so here I am deciding like okay you know what I don't really like this lighter blue so I just painted all the way back over but you know what in the end I think that all of the layers did kind of help in the finished look so that's kind of why I said in the beginning like you know I, I learned some things I wouldn't do the same next time but at the same time I think everything kind of happened for a reason and I like the end result so I'm taking my finger here and this is how I was trying to give you guys a closer view of how I like to paint along the edges of any raised areas and I just get a small amount of paint on my fingers and then it's just really easy to hit those raised areas on the frames um, there with your finger if you're lightly rubbing and you don't have too much paint that is definitely key you can always add more so just make sure not to add too much if you're doing a similar effect like this and again I'm not worried about getting the paint in an exact spot or like placement anyways I wanted to darken things up around the edge so I'm using my VersaFine black ink and again I'm just gonna use my finger get a little bit of that ink on here I should have used a sponge dauber like it would have worked out the same but I made my hands real messy so I'm just going around like the really the outermost edges for the black and I did end up using a little extra black in the very end that I did not film so this is just adding a, a little extra dimension around the entire door kind of like a shadow I guess because this whole panel you know was placed on top of the book so I always like to make sure that the edges of a panel like this have um some more dimension I guess yeah that was what I'm trying to say now to seal everything in I did use some matte Mod Podge and I really like the the final look that this gave and then also it, you know it's going to seal everything in here's a nice little ant we um are blessed with ants in our kitchen during this time of year and i just thought it was funny because i was filming and then all of a sudden i saw this little ant walking across my filming area so i was like okay so i'm just taking a brush with this because i do feel that sometimes when you're using mod podge the the final look does show if you use brush strokes or a sponge like either way so if you are wanting something to look completely smooth you just need to keep that in mind and make sure that you really smooth everything out but for me I was using the imperfections of the brush to kind of go in my favor because I, I was thinking of 
what a real door would look like and a lot of times there would be a lot of texture on that door um, especially like an old door and so I really liked using this Mod Podge for not only sealing it in but for that final look that you end up getting so I went ahead and painted just one coat over the entire door here and then I let this dry and then it was time to go ahead and glue this panel onto the journal. Now, you can see here on the corners, um, I used my heat tool after I had the Mod Podge on and really lit that area like bubble up a bit. And so that was another cool effect that I didn't actually, I don't think I showed. No, I don't think so. Maybe I did. Anyways. Um, Oh, that's right. Now we're going to add this little door knocker. This is a ring fastener from Tim Holtz. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use my awl to poke a hole through the door. Now I had a lot of layers of chipboard here, so it definitely took a bit. But you want to make sure and add glue so that this definitely sticks in place. And so you just push it through like a little brad. And I love how this looks. I think that this and the doorknob that you'll see in a moment really makes this look like a door. And so you just gotta make sure on the back to go ahead and um, press those brads down. For the doorknob now, I had a really hard time getting this doorknob in because for one, I had extra layers of chipboard and I didn't think about how long that post was because the doorknob has basically like a post that um that screws into the doorknob and so i had to like cut away some of the chipboard actually and so luckily everything worked out and it was fine but it was so hard and i almost gave up on this and then i was like what else can i use but really all i had to do was cut down some of the chipboard and you can't see that it's cut down anyways because the doorknob completely hides it I guess so I got that screwed on and I used glue to keep it in place and then I just added a generous amount of glue to my journal cover like a lot a lot and then I went ahead and placed my door on top which I didn't show but I just placed it on top and I let that sit with heavy books on top of it overnight and this is the final outcome guys thank you so much for watching and I don't know if I'm going to show the rest of me sewing the signatures into the journal because I have so many videos doing that, but um, if I do, they'll be up soon, and otherwise, I hope that you guys got something from this. I'll see you later. Bye.